Hey guys, I hope your week is going well. I've always gotten requests from you all over the years to do a video talking about methyl sulfonyl methane or MSM. You guys were wondering, is taking it a good idea for skin health? Can it improve the look of skin uh, or acne? So that's what I'm gonna cover in today's video, both oral supplementation as well as MSM and topical preparations. MSM is a dietary supplement that is very popular and is pursued for a variety of ailments, uh, mostly as an anti-inflammatory. MSM is actually very well studied in terms of its safety, tolerability, toxicology, uh, bioavailability. There are many animal studies on MSM as well as human experimental studies and clinical trials demonstrating the tolerability and safety of MSM. So much so that the FDA in 2007 deemed MSM generally regarded as safe um, for daily consumption uh, at doses somewhere around four grams per day. So it's very well tolerated and considered safe and effective. In clinical studies, health specific outcomes that have improved with supplementation of MSM include joint pain, muscle aches, an inflammatory condition in the bladder known as interstitial cystitis. And it has a good backing of evidence to show that it is a functional antioxidant, meaning it can help to scavenge free radicals that accumulate in the body and lead to damage and aging of body systems, including the skin. It also is a anti-inflammatory meaning it can lower inflammation in the body that drives things like arthritis, muscle aches, and skin aging. And in addition to that, it has some immunomodulatory properties, meaning uh, that it can help our immune system and our body behave in our favor. And specifically in situations of stress and in stress response, it can help kind of guide our immune system. So it's thought to um, behave in our favor and not be as pro-inflammatory and damaging to, to our body systems, including the skin. Currently, it is actively pursued as a supplement and has been studied in a variety of clinical settings, but prior to that, MSM uh, was used primarily as a solvent, similar to its parent compound, dimethyl sulfoxide, or DMSO. DMSO or dimethyl sulfoxide has been extensively studied as a membrane penetration enhancer, meaning it is an agent that can help get active ingredients into cells better, and so it's frequently added. In addition to being a solvent, it has a long-standing track record, an established track record as an antioxidant and as an anti-inflammatory. So MSM is derived from DMSO. In the late 70s, Crown Zellerbeck chemists began to look at MSM to see if it demonstrated similar therapeutic uh, potential as the parent compound DMSO. In 1981, the US actually granted these chemists a patent to look at MSM uh, as an ingredient to smooth and soften both the skin and nails, as well as as an ingredient to be added to blood products as a diluent, similar to parent com the parent compound DMSO. Thereafter, uh, in addition to their work and the animal studies and larger studies in humans, then in 2007 is when the FDA said, okay, this seems very safe, so we'll grant it, we'll, we'll call it GRAS, or generally regarded as safe. And ever since then, sales of MSM have been on the rise as a dietary supplement. Naturally, MSM is made in the ocean by marine organisms. Algae and plankton, phytoplankton make MSM, and it is subsequently aerosolized in the atmosphere, deposited in the soil, and taken up uh, and incorporated in plants to varying degrees. Uh, the accumulation of MSM in plants varies based on the species and a variety of environmental conditions, the technicalities of which I'm not well versed on, but uh, suffice it to say there is naturally occurring MSM in plant, whole, whole food plants, but at a very low level. So there subsequently has been interest in generating this synthetically so that as humans we can consume it at higher quantities, not necessarily have to consume an ungodly amount of food to, to get uh, the, the 
benefit of MSM. So synthetically made MSM is just made by a little lab reaction of DMSO, uh, which is a parent compound, with peroxide, hydrogen peroxide, and that results in MSM. Daily ingestion of synthetic MSM at doses of three grams per day in human subjects has been shown to increase serum levels of MSM. And with ongoing use, those serum levels remain elevated and continue to increase, suggesting uh, that MSM can accumulate in the body with continued use. I already mentioned it's an anti-inflammatory, an antioxidant, and has immune regulatory functions, but it's also a sulfur donor and therefore functions to strengthen protein-protein interactions. Oral MSM is safe and well tolerated, but topically applied MSM in creams and lotion vehicles has been in investigated in a few small human studies and appears to be very well tolerated and is not irritating both in animal models as well as in human studies. So it doesn't seem to be problematic as far as tolerability and safety uh, for topical use. One of the first studies looking at MSM and skin appearance showed an improvement in skin texture and skin appearance kind of by uh, subjective grading of examiners as well as participant self-assessment and some instrumental analysis. Another study looked at, uh, he, another human study uh, looked at uh, doing chemical peels with pyruvic acid and MSM in combination. They did four chemical peels separated by periods of time of two weeks. And in that study of, in people, they showed an improvement in hyperpigmentation. Subjects with melasma had improvement in their melasma. There was also an improvement in skin elasticity and skin texture, and the degree of wrinkling was also lessened. And then the next human study that we have suggesting benefit in the skin is one looking at a supplement that contained both silymarin as well as MSN in people with rosacea. People with rosacea taking this supplement for one month, at the end of one month, they showed improved measurements in some of the symptoms of rosacea, like burning, redness, irritation, and itch. One of the more recent studies that I'm familiar with and have found looking at MSM as a supplement and showing it potentially to be beneficial is a randomized placebo-controlled trial that looked at a supplement that contained three ingredients, not just MSM, but three ingredients in total. It contained 200 milligrams of hyaluronic acid, 500 milligrams of L-carnosine, and 400 milligrams of MSM. And it was a randomized control placebo, randomized placebo controlled trial. And at the end of two months of taking this supplement, subjects who were taking this supplement had an improvement in skin hydration and elasticity through instrumental analysis based methods. And they also showed a decrease in sebum production. Uh, and so that was, you know, kind of interesting. It suggests that MSM, maybe as an antioxidant and anti-inflammatory, can be beneficial for improving the appearance of skin and the skin hydration. In terms of uh, another outcome they showed also was an improvement in wrinkles around the eyes, periorbital wrinkles, uh, crow's feet. Ha there was an improvement in the appearance of those in subjects taking this supplement as opposed to the placebo. But a problem with this study is that it's really hard to nail down which of these outcomes is due to which compound in the supplement. The study authors posit that it's actually the combination of all three things that are giving this, this outcome that they're measuring, but it's hard to really say for sure what degree each one helps for what. In terms of the observed outcome on sebum, because I know a lot of you guys are wondering, is this helpful for acne? Is it beneficial for acne? The study authors pointed out that they really couldn't draw any solid conclusions about the decrease in sebum because all study participants at the beginning of the study had differing amounts of baseline sebum. So it was really hard to normalize that. And they think that they're just saying, you know, kind of their average ended up being lower. Uh, due to differences in starting sebum from the, diff from the different uh, participants. Uh, so really hard to say for sure. Uh, but they posit perhaps it might have something to do with uh, the hyaluronic acid, but they really couldn't say for sure. So I wouldn't hang my hat on MSM as uh, something uh, for, for acne per se. 
as I said, it has been deemed generally regarded as safe uh, at dosages less than 4,845.6 milligrams per day. Uh, again, we do have evidence that taking it daily does lead to bioaccumulation. It's hard to say for sure how beneficial it is. So take home point, it really doesn't seem to be harmful. But you know, I wouldn't go. I wouldn't go expecting grandiose things from MSM. Uh, the other thing I will point out is that while it is generally safe, there are no side effects. MSM, because it is a sulfur-like compound, there is some thought and some anecdotal reports of this interacting with alcohol. Meaning, if you drink alcohol and you take the supplement, it can have a reaction and make you sick. Uh, this is something that we see with a medication called uh, antabuse that is given to people with alcohol uh, abuse disorders, uh, alcoholism, uh, to deter them from consuming alcohol because they take the medication if they drink alcohol it makes them terribly sick. It's called a disulfuram reaction. That can happen with other with antibiotics that have sulfur-like moieties to them to a certain degree. Um, and so the degree to which that occurs with MSM supplementation has not been examined really, but there are anecdotal reports of people feeling sick when they drink alcohol and consume this. So be conscientious of that and aware of that if you are taking this as a supplement, that that might be something that you might not enjoy as a potential side effect. I know you all are always curious about MSM creams and lotions and which ones can I recommend. I really struggle to recommend any of them. Uh, I'm frankly not overly impressed by the data on topical use at this point. They're very small studies showing benefit and I don't think we've really dialed down the concentration or the vehicle, whether it needs to be a lotion or a cream. And the other reason that I'm apprehensive to recommend MSM creams is that by and large, the majority of the ones that I find that I've looked into, they all contain other ingredients that can be irritating. Most of them contain essential oils for whatever reason. And you guys know essential oils, they really can cause a lot of problems with irritation, uh, allergic contact dermatitis, and they can degrade in topical products and cause a really problematic irritation. Uh, for example, there are a lot of creams out there, MSM creams out there that have tea tree oil in it. Tea tree oil, I have a video on. It really has some issues in terms of stability. So I'm just nervous to recommend an MSM cream knowing that. There is one MSM cream on Amazon that I found that does not have that, it does not have essential oils in it. It's $9.99 for two ounces. What is the brand? Uh, at Last Naturals, uh, $9.99 for two ounces. I've never tried it before, but uh, you know, disclaimer, I don't know if it's actually good or not, uh, but that is one that I have found that doesn't have uh, essential oils in it. It does contain aloe vera in it. I have a video talking about aloe vera and topical products uh, and how it can be helpful. So check that out if you are wondering about aloe, but as a side note, this product that I found on Amazon does have aloe in it but it doesn't have the tea tree oil or some of the other essential oils. Not a lot of them do. So I feel like, you know, maybe that's one that would be okay. But again, I, I've never used it before. So disclaimer, I, I really can't say for sure if that's effective, but I'll list it down below if you are interested. Comment below though, you guys, if you use MSM products, which ones you use. I know Madre Labs makes one, but again, that has essential oils in it. I know Sun Foods makes uh, a couple of MSM uh, topicals all again with fragrance and essential oils. So, you know, kind of hard for me to recommend those and just kind of the lack of strong evidence to push for MSM in terms of skin benefit. So I really haven't seen any studies substantiating the claims that MSM can improve acne, can uh, improve the appearance of post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation from healing acne or acne redness. I've seen a lot of testimonies online of what MSM does for people. I just don't have any clinical data to support those statements and those claims. Things like post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation, post-inflammatory redness and acne, they tend to gradually improve over time. So whenever I read that, I'm always like, did that actually improve because of that product or did it improve because that is the nature of a disease process? 
Uh, so, you know, a little bit of skepticism on my part that this actually works topically to any great degree. So I hope this video was helpful to you guys in terms of MSM, what it is. Uh, seems to be pretty safe though. Uh, so if you liked it, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.